easy, but leading an environmental effort makes it all the more hard. I'm trying my best to raise awareness against plastic toys. Today, I'd like to introduce you to one amazing person who has been supporting me ever since I started this effort. You'll see why he's so amazing in just a minute. Welcome to my podcast, Little Mind Chats. Minds are little, not your thoughts. I'm your host, Siona Vikram. My guest today is that one rare person who understood the importance of why I'm collecting back plastic from children's lives. In the past six months, he has done whatever it takes to support me and highlight what I'm doing. Please meet my guest, Azan Sait. Azan Farol Sait is the founder and chief happiness officer at the Hub Bengaluru. Azan is the driving force behind Safina Ventures, the startup studio behind brands like Safina Banquet, Safina Plaza, Safina Motors. If you're in Bengaluru, you will certainly be familiar with Safina Plaza. Azan is a serial entrepreneur who has started and worked with over a dozen startups over the last decade. Hi, Azan. I've been waiting so long to have you on my podcast. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Siona. And wow, that was such an incredible um, introduction. I'm super excited to be a part of your growth. And it's been amazing over the last few months just watching you do what you do. Happy Blue is such a happening place. It has 50,000 followers on Instagram. How did you even start? We just completed five years in December. And there have been thousands of people that have supported us over those five years, our members offline, um, our team members who, who helped us build this and bring it to where it is today. We started off as a, as a very, very small, simple concept to have a cool space in central Bangalore where people who wanted to express their creative um, ideas could come and, and express them with, without any judgment of or thinking about what other people would think. It, we wanted to create a safe space offline. Um, and that's, that was like the true root of why we created the hub. It manifested as a co-living space. And then over time, uh, we, we went into co-working, we went into events as we wanted to involve more people that not just the people living or working here, but also people in the community. And I think that was a kind of an interesting transition when we said, let's not just look at the members here, but let's invite other people to come in. The, the, the moment we started to change an approach and, and try to look at things that way, that's when we started to really open up and think bigger about, hey, what could we do now? It's not just limited to what we can do in this space. But like you said, with Instagram, we just crossed about 50,000 uh, on our Insta, InstaFam community also. So it's just been an amazing experience of learning and sharing stories and collaborations. And it's been a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> so I feel privileged that you let me use Hub Bangalore as a collection center for my Little Wife Club. What made you feel like supporting me in this cause? I think um, I don't overcomplicate it if uh, I look at you as a creator, right? Um, my way of looking at the world is I'm cause agnostic. You care about a certain cause, about sustainability, about the environment. You care about creating content. We work with people that are just trying to make a difference and get their voice heard. And, and there are people doing it in completely different spaces, whether it's food or it's art, or in your case, it, it's an important cause around the environment, right? What that mission is, 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 it's just amazing how, how, how many different interesting things people are working on. And I think the one role that I think we can play in terms of how we add value is when we connect different people doing different things. It's almost like a megaphone. If you think about it, a word we use often internally is we want to amplify, right? You're already doing an amazing job. Um, you're already working so hard. You've pulled people together. If we can just come and add fuel to the fire and help you reach more people, then you can have a bigger impact. That's the role we try to play with when we work with creators. I think the same as well. I knew that as soon as I entered this place. <laughs> so I'm pushing for organization like yours to become completely sustainable. Mm -hmm. So do you see any practical issues with going sustainable in your organization? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, nobody disagrees that we shouldn't be more sustainable and we shouldn't work towards being 100% um, uh, sustainable and, and, and in sync with the environment. I think it's just the process of understanding and having the resources and having people who care, 
right, who understand first that it's important, then figure out how do we get there, uh, and then create a process to actually track that, that kind of uh, progress that you make along the way. Um, I think just that support and, and that interest uh, can go a long way in helping uh, an organization, even like the Hub, which we, we are very forward thinking, we are very um, open minded, but sometimes in, in the chaos of doing all these different things, something as fundamental as like making sure we're, we, we're carbon neutral or we're eco-friendly might sometimes real, in reality just get left behind. And I feel like that's what, that's what, if I'm being honest with you, is, is something that I feel we can do a lot more when it comes to that space. And maybe after today, after talking to you, we get started on our journey to, to, to being on that path. Amazing. So do you really think that children like me can make a difference? A hundred percent. I think that's why I'm giving you my time today. And that's why we've always supported you because um, we meet a lot of different creators and a lot of different um, people of different age groups, different different backgrounds, different levels of expertise and passion. But um, we don't try to discriminate on age or based on where someone's coming from. I think with us, we're very, very genuine when it comes to feeling energy. And the way you approached it when you came down here with your mom and the interactions we had on Clubhouse as well, and your eagerness to kind of, you know, see that through, we love that and we, we just reciprocate that. So we feed off of that energy and I've, I've seen you at Blend Bazaar coming here, putting up your stall, talking to people again and again, seeing the same story, explaining to them who you are. That drive and that energy is kind of infectious, right? So we're, we're, just, yeah. ref, we're just reflecting what you're putting out. Mm -hmm. Like a mirror megaphone. Exactly, a mirror megaphone. I love that. Yes, that's what we want to do. I decided that we could add some fun element into this interview and I decided that we could have some, a fun and rapid round of icebreaker questions. Let's go. So what's the funniest moment that you've had as a child? I fell into a sewer once. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I fell into a sewer when my mom was paying my school fees and um, I hit my chin as I was going in and uh, I remember my mom saying that there was a long line and as everyone started running out saying there's a kid has fallen down, my mom was like now's my chance I get to go to the front to pay, to pay the fees quickly but she didn't know that I was the one that had actually fallen in. Um, and then yeah, I guess that's, that's the first story that comes to my mind so if she's watching this I'm sure she's going to crack up. So who was your most favourite teacher at school? I loved all my teachers. I was that one kid that I was really naughty, but I, I respected and I had a very good relationship with my teachers. So I kind of got away with a lot of stuff also because of that. There have been like almost a dozen teachers that have changed my life. We had Ms. Zera, who was our literature teacher, Ms. Geeta, who was our high school coordinator, Ms. Pandit, she was our English teacher. She used to like stop me from saying um, 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 as I started to talk, as I started to do public speaking, I used to say um a lot. So a, a lot of teachers. I had a really good school experience. I went to school at Bangalore International uh, in Bangalore and um, I loved it. Yeah, I think maybe I'm that naughty kid at school, mm -hmm. even though there are a million others in my school. It's always fun to be a little naughty, right? Yeah. So how are you naughty now when everything's virtual? How do, how do you create a little bit of chaos online? Well, sometimes I try to distract my classmates by putting on uh, these crazy filters like that barrette or, mm. that, or, those, or that lipstick or that yeah. beard or something that you get on Zoom. Yeah. And there are a few others in my class who put up these uh, disturbing profile pics, which, um, yeah. to, which to the teachers seem disturbing, but to the... Uh, the like, class, it's really funny. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I guess kids will be kids. You guys will always find a way yeah. to stir things up, even if it's online, right? Yeah. So what is the best read for children? If I had to advise for how to spend your time to learn, I would say watch YouTube videos. I spend about two hours a day watching YouTube videos and I learn through YouTube videos. And I think our, the new the Gen Z and the millennials and, uh, and a lot of the younger people, they're learning through video more. And, and the amount of time the, the younger generation spends on reading has actually gone down drastically. I know um, actually a lot, a lot of people are trying to encourage to read more again. But um, I don't see why it might be an issue. I think as long as you're not 
wasting your time in terms of consuming entertainment and silly content and if you're actually getting value out of it, I think there's no harm in um, doubling down on video. Yeah, sometimes I watch Do Dr. Bynock's show if I don't want to read my science textbook. Mm -hmm. it, it's just such a, it's, it's a more efficient way to grasp the knowledge sometimes, right? Yeah. Well, I watch YouTube sometimes, you know. Yeah? Yeah, and I also love reading books, you know. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite book? I'd say Matilda, but I'm, I was reading Ice Monster before coming here. The mm -hmm. Ice Monster by David Valiums. Actually, I thought I'd bring it here and read it while I was waiting for you, but then Mom would let you lose it, and then she uh, told me to keep it back in the house. <laughs> well, last but not least, mm -hmm. if you were offered a role in a movie, what role would you play? I would play the role of Elon Musk in his life's documentary. That would be fun. I'd get to go check out all the different things he's working on. I'd get to go into his factory, into the boring tunnel, uh, maybe onto a Starlink uh, satellite. Yeah. Could be cool. But the boring tunnel isn't really that boring. It's not at all boring. <laughs> the only thing boring about it may be the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was the end of our icebreaking questions, but I have mm -hmm. one last question related to the interview, okay. which is, what's your advice for kids of my generation? I think it's almost funny because on some sides, I feel like I say this to people who are older than me when, when I'm talking to people that are building companies that are maybe uh, 10 or 20 years older than me as, as to I am doing so much more than what they did when they were our age. But at the same time, I'm kind of in the middle and I can see you guys are exposed to so much more. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it's almost unfair that we have to give you guys advice because y'all are being exposed to so much more. Y'all are using technology in 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 ways that we never could, right? Through your phone, you can now access anything. So I think the only thing that I would tell you guys is always think about what you can do with what you, what you have access to, because you guys have access to everything. So, hmm. we come to the end of our interview. That was one of the best, fun, and yet important conversations I've ever had. Thank you, Azan. Thank you for having me, Siona. Thank you, and you're welcome. <laughs> Azan, mm. you've just proved to me that people heading organizations can clearly do a lot more to go sustainable. Thank you. You raised my hopes of bringing in more sustainability through my little wise club. I'm, I'm super happy to have you here today and I'm looking forward to working with you um, to constantly keep making all our different businesses more sustainable um, and responsible. So thank you for guiding us on that. Thank you and you're welcome once again. <laughs> Friends, don't forget to follow Azan on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter too. Links are in the show notes. Also, don't forget to follow The Hub Bengaluru and me on social media. Thanks Azan for listening.